Well, hello, ladies and gents. Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and welcome back. Crystal did last Monday's video, or this Monday's video. I'm doing this Friday's video, so we're all kind of bass backwards here, but it's all good. So, let's talk about an AMA question. This one is brought to us from David, and he asks, why do you choose a bodybuilding, why do you choose bodybuilding without chemistry? I am a natural bodybuilder too, but I think of it every day when I see my friends. It is hard, but the right way. What's your philosophy about this? So, David, before I answer your question, let's roll the intro. All right, we're back. And to answer David's question, why I chose natural bodybuilding as opposed to enhanced bodybuilding or basically bodybuilding in which you're using performance enhancing drugs, steroids, growth hormones, insulin, things of that nature. So I've been bodybuilding now for about 12 years. I started when I was a junior in high school. I weighed 115 pounds. I was super scrawny and I had no clue as to what I was doing. I was getting all my advice and wisdom from magazines at the grocery store and YouTube channels. And when you start diving into the world of bodybuilding, like when you're looking at a magazine cover, it's all about these massive jacked guys that are all competing on the Olympia stage and are all taking steroids. So you see that and you feel compelled to do whatever they did to get like that. And you don't know initially that it's because of steroids. You hear people just say that because they don't train at all and they're just unknowing, but then you get into it and you realize, okay, they're probably doing something that I'm not because they're growing year after year after year and I seem to have plateau. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Let's break it down. When you start working out, you get these newbie gains, all right? That's because your body is subjected to a new stimuli and you don't really know what's going on, but your body's soaking it all up and it's growing as a result of it because you're, you're subjecting your body to this new demand and it builds muscle to you know, allow for the movement of this weight that you're subjecting it to. And I mean, you can put on a pretty substantial amount of muscle, lean tissue in the first year or so of lifting. And then eventually that newbie gain period just kind of wears out. And then you have like this slower period of maybe putting on, you know, three, five, six pounds of muscle a year. And then that starts to level out. And after you've been lifting for about 10 years, you're lucky if you add one pound of muscle a year. And you're scratching your head thinking to yourself, well, shoot. This isn't worth it. All this work, I'm only putting on one pound of muscle, if even that. Why don't I invest in some steroids or other performance-enhancing drugs so I can compete on the level that these pros are? Well, let me tell you why I didn't go that route. First of all, backtrack even further, a lot of people jump into the sport of bodybuilding and they start playing around with steroids and drugs right out of the gates. And that's just bad news bears all the way around because you have no idea, you have no perspective of what your body is capable of naturally. If you're even gonna do steroids, I would certainly encourage you to do it after you've reached your own natural genetic potential. However, I would argue that you will never reach your own natural genetic potential if you keep subjecting yourself to new stimuli. So I have a problem with that. I have a problem with people that start lifting weights and automatically think they need supplements, they need creatine, nothing's wrong with creatine, I'm all for creatine, but they automatically just start going to these over-the-counter things first and foremost to try and get this edge, all these pre-workouts, post-workouts, they spend all their money on supplements. And then if that's not giving them the results they're looking for, they turn to illegal supplements, steroids, drugs of that nature. And it's just a slippery slope, y'all. I am not a fan of it. There's, there's professionals that do that for a living. That's how they support their family. That is their livelihood. They know the risks, hopefully, and they make that call. And for them, you know, more power to you. How am I to say that you shouldn't do those things? I don't understand why people use steroids if they're not doing this for a living, if their their life doesn't depend on it. They're just simply doing it to look big and jacked on the beach for three months out of the year. That makes no inherent sense to me because it's just not enough reward for the risk you're taking. But again, who am I to judge? Personally, I'm just going to speak personally because you asked me about why I didn't go that route and I'm the only person that can speak 100% knowledgeably about me because I am me. So a couple different reasons. One, I, I've i always kind of had this, pho this phobia to drugs in general. I think I was just raised that way. Like my parents were very straight and narrow. 
you know, don't do any kind of drugs, don't smoke, don't drink, doing that kind of stuff. Um, so I just kind of like came out of the gates with this phobia to drugs. And then as I got older, it's like, okay, I've got a mind of my own. I don't have to do what my parents say. Why don't I start dabbling in these other things? And I didn't really ever dabble in steroids because it just seemed wrong because I had been training naturally for so long up to that point, and I hadn't reached any of this, you know, I hadn't reached the ceiling. I hadn't capped out. I was seeing progress year after year after year. And if you're seeing progress year after year after year, you're doing something right. It doesn't make sense to try and add this other stimuli into the mix to try and expedite that at the cost of your health. And I always viewed it as having a cost to your health. And if anybody tells you that it doesn't have an adverse effect or can't potentially have an adverse effect to your health, then they're, they're blowing smoke because that is just not the case. Anytime you, you, you modify your body's natural hormones, there could be some pros that come with that, but there can also very well be some cons that come with that. And it goes beyond just steroids. I mean, just look at, look at, uh, you know, hormones, uh, exogenous hormones for females, uh, birth control, like that can screw up your cycle too. That can screw up, that can screw up a lot of things. And Crystal's made several videos about that specifically. But whenever you're adding exogenous hormones to your body, obviously it's not natural. And it can oftentimes not be optimal. For me, natural bodybuilding is very appealing because it's incredibly challenging. Any type of bodybuilding is challenging. The people that are taking a bunch of steroids and juice, that's also very challenging. But I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that natural bodybuilding is more difficult in the sense that you cannot rely on any external crutch in order to achieve a look that you wouldn't normally be able to achieve. Like when in natural bodybuilding, most federations are extremely strict. Most supplements aren't even allowed. They have rules about all kinds of things, no diuretics on that stuff. So in natural bodybuilding, it's like you have to know your body so incredibly well that you leave nothing to chance and that you know why your body and how your body responds to electrolyte manipulations, sleep, hydration, everything. And if with if you're doing enhanced bodybuilding, you just have you've got more wiggle room. Like you can have a pretty sloppy cheat meal and then take stuff to counteract the negative effects of that cheat meal. And that's not optimal. I mean you would look better on steroids if you didn't have the cheat meal in the first place, obviously but you're able to get away with more that you're not really able to get away with in natural bodybuilding. And I don't know any competitors that would contest that. Um, and again, there's no, this is no disrespect to people that choose to go the route of taking things. Like That's their prerogative, more power to them. But for me personally, I'm drawn to doing things that I find to be more challenging, require more discipline, and just have fewer margins for error. And I feel like natural bodybuilding encompasses that and embodies that very, very well. Also, I love the long game approach to natural bodybuilding. Most natural bodybuilders don't reach their prime until they're in their 40s or 50s even. Because if you're implementing progressive overload principles in your training, if you're eating a quality, healthy, nutritious diet, then then you can just keep getting better. And there is definitely a point of diminishing returns, but I feel that with keto especially, having those healthy fats in, having enough cholesterol for your cell walls to be formed properly and everything just be humming along like it should, your ability to make the most of your physique from a health conscious standpoint and also from just a, a physically appealing standpoint is going to be heightened tremendously. And I am incredibly excited to see what I look like as a 50-year-old natural bodybuilder stepping on stage after having lived this way for many, many years, whereas most people are looking for the shirt, the shortcut just a few years into their bodybuilding journey. So I'm drawn to that kind of stuff. Like me personally, my personality likes going the routes in which most people just don't like waiting that long. I like that. So I'm drawn to that and it's like a perfect match for natural bodybuilding. But again, I wouldn't be too long-winded here. Everybody has to make that decision on their own. For you, you're asking about how you can, you can do it when the friends around you are, are taking steroids. You got to know yourself. You got to know yourself, man. You got to know, you have to have the self-awareness to know what you want out of this. First of all, why are you bodybuilding in the first place? Is it for just the physical appearance? Is it for the mental fortitude and the prowess that comes with, you know, pushing every single day and being so consistent with your training, your nutrition? Like, what, what are you doing this for? Are you doing this to look good in five years? Or are you doing this to look good for a lifetime? There's a lot of people that looked amazing when they peaked 
you know, like on the Olympia stage and were taking a bunch of juice and steroids and everything under the sun, but then look like they never even picked up a weight now. And that doesn't mean it's because they did steroids, but and again, I'm kind of out of my wheelhouse here because I have never done steroids. So I don't really know, but I have noticed there seems to be a trend in which if people abuse these drugs for a long period of time in their earlier years, their body doesn't really hold on to that much muscle because it's not the same quality muscle. And again, it's kind of out of my wheelhouse, but it just looks different. It looks different. Your health is different. You can't retain all of that stuff because it wasn't built naturally. The natural bodybuilders oftentimes look amazing as they get older and older and older, especially if they continue to lift hard and heavy. So I like the long game. I like knowing that what I'm doing is contributing to my overall health instead of diminishing it. And that's why I've just always personally been drawn to natural bodybuilding as my sport. So hopefully that answered your question. Thank you for submitting the question. You requested some chocolate malt bricks. So I've got some malt bricks headed your way. Thank you again, David. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you submitting these AMA questions. The link in the description is for submitting these. If you submit a question and I use it on this video, I will send you some free keto bricks of your choosing. Appreciate y'all and talk to you soon.